Touch three people and say, I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor. Look at somebody who ain't afraid to praise them. Say, if you only knew what I'd been through, you'd be praising them too. I know why you ain't praising them, because he ain't brought you through nothing. So don't do it for you. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me. Tell your neighbor, do it for me. I thought last year was going to be my last year. I just found out I'm just getting started. This is for me. Come on, give him glory in this place. I want you to praise God for the incomparable, incomparable, amazing gift to the body of Christ. And it's one of the singular tools that God is using to make sure that the choir and gospel music stays alive. Would you praise God for Mr. Ricky Dillard? God bless you. We honor you. You have just made this woman's day. And we praise God for his amazing grace. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready for the word. I want you to go with me to the book of Exodus chapter 33. That great name. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Oh, precious Jesus. We have the victory. Oh, 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 tell who can stand me for us when we call on that great name of Jesus. Oh, my precious Jesus, we have victory. Exodus chapter 33. I'm going to read verse 12, skip down to verse 17. The Lord is in the building. Exodus chapter 33 verse 12 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. So sometimes God will send you to a place and won't tell you who's going with you. And sometimes you'll miss the blessing because many of us are afraid to go by ourselves. If I could call this sermon, I got so many titles, so I'm just going to drop them in here. Just tell your neighbor, go by yourself. He said, yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And thou hast also found grace in my sight. Verse 17, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. Somebody say, speak it. Speak it. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Last verse. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall be no more man to see me and live. I'm going to make a prophecy in this place today. For those of you all who have had a season where you felt lost, disconnected, afraid, confused. God told me to give you this message today. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel God again. That, that's what I want to talk about today. Just tell somebody, I feel God. 
again. Have you all ever heard the old adage, what goes up must come down? It's a reference to the inescapable grip of the law of gravity attributed to the discovery, although it was here, to a physicist uh, by the name of Sir Isaac Newton, who you know the story, was sitting underneath an apple tree. And an apple fell and hit him on the head, and it was from that moment he derived that there must be a force in the earth that takes a thing from zero velocity uh, to better than 670 million miles per hour. That is the speed of gravity. That is to suggest that the apple was falling at 670 plus million miles per hour, but it did not reach that potential because the tree wasn't tall enough. Which means that had the tree been much taller, the apple would have transformed into a bullet. And at 670 plus million miles per hour, probably would have crushed the entire skeleton system of Sir Isaac Newton. But God didn't let it be so because he did not allow the distance between the head and the apple to be so great that it would cause death. It only caused discovery. You have to praise God for how sometimes he will shorten the distance between you and the thing that's trying to kill you. Because had the enemy had the running start that he decided, he would have had the momentum and cleared you off of the scene. But thank God that he did not allow this bomb to drop in your life for death. He only wanted you to have discovery. Anybody in the room learning different things about yourself in this season? I know, I know you can't say this at home because it'll be an argument, and I know you can't say it at the job because you may get fired, but this is a safe space. Just tell your neighbor, the older I get, the less I can take. Just, just let me, who, who am I talking to in here today? When I was young, I'd let you break my heart over and over again, but if I, if I feel you scratching my heart, When I was young, I'd let you talk to me any kind of way, but if I, if I see you fix your lips, just tell your neighbor, I'm discovering things about me. Be patient with me. God ain't through with me yet. Gravity, Brother Watson, is not a theory because through mathematical trials, consistency, and time, gravity, RB, has proved to work every single time. There has never been a thing in the earth without uh, the assistance of sustained thrust that has not had to obey the law of gravity. I don't care how high somebody got and thought they could fly. Gravity said, you and your weed. It's got to come down. And, and here is the great news that if you have to come down. So does every giant, every wall, every obstacle, 
and everything that the enemy launches at you, it is also subjugated to the law of gravity. My guarantee for you today is that what goes up must come down, pause, in the natural. But we don't live, nor do we operate only in the natural world. There is also a, con a spiritual component to us, for we're not fleshly beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. My guarantee for you today is that whether it be in heaven or in Hades shall you lift your eyes, you will live forever. That even when this old earthly tabernacle shall dissolve, the Bible includes us and proves to us time and time again that there is another building eternal in the heavens. And here it is, it's not made, somebody say by hand. And so as we look at Sir Isaac Newton's law of gravity and we assume that it is apropos and has authority, there is another king that is king of kings. And this God that we serve says that I am the only one who has the ability to create a law and then for your benefit, suspend the law. So the law of gravity says what goes up must come down, but there is another law greater than gravity called favor. And favor is when God breaks the rules to bless you. I don't know who I'm talking to in this room today, but God told me to tell you that there have been rules that have been set up in the earth that you, without the education, you in the single parent household, you who was raised by an alcoholic, you who was raised by somebody addicted to drugs, you somebody who was abandoned and adopted, all of the laws say that you should not overcome. But then God says, I'm going to suspend the law and I'm going to give you favor and I'm going to break the law to bless you. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but God told me to tell you that no weapon that was formed against you is going to be able to prosper and I don't care where you came from you can still get to where you're supposed to be give your neighbor a high five and say I'm still gonna get there I'm gonna I might be single when I get there but I'm gonna get there I might be broken when I get there but I'm gonna get there I might be angry when I get there but I'm gonna get there please understand that nothing can stop you you all the way up it says there's another law. It's called favor. I don't know if you know it, you're sitting next to favor. <laughs> Going to introduce yourself, somebody said, baby, don't worry about my name, don't worry about my phone number. Let me just introduce myself. Favor, 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 favor. I ain't got no business working where I work. I ain't got no business living where I live. I, I ain't had no credit. I still got the car. I didn't have no, I still got the house. I still got my right mind. Just tell him favor, 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 favor. The enemy thought he had me, but he, he couldn't get me because I got favor on my life. I need all of the people who got favor on your life to shout favor. Oh, and by the way, for all your haters, tell them it ain't fair. I didn't ask for it. I, I, I didn't ask for it. I didn't petition for it. I didn't politic for it. It's just what he gave me. Somebody shout, it ain't fair. I don't know who I'm talking to, but let me just put this in the atmosphere. You are not supposed to be here. I gotta let that sink in. You are not supposed to be here. You thought it was back pain. The devil was trying to shut your kidneys down and God. You thought it was anxiety, but it was almost a heart attack, but God. You thought it was a headache, but it was really an aneurysm trying to form, but God. Now see, what you don't know is how many things God blocked. I need somebody in here to shout. Cause he protects us from dangers both seen and so I'm not just praising God for the stuff I know he blocked. I'm praising God for the stuff that I didn't know coming, but he put it in his place.
the Lord said to Moses, depart, go up from here. Can I just tell you early, the only place you're going from here, you hear me, Paris? The only place you're going from here is, everybody say, I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up. And I ain't got time to sit next to down. If you're going to be sad and ashy the rest of the sermon, uh, uh, Brother Diller told you, you can go get this as a role for praising. It's, it's about two seats over there. We ain't got many, but there are a few. But everybody on my row is going up. Just inform everybody. Tiff Joy, tell them everybody on this row is going up. Everybody on this row is going up. That means my money going up, my attitude going up, my confidence going up. Everybody shout up, up, up. Now, if they still sitting down, I ask you to just please say, excuse me. I'm about to get on your nerve for the next 20 minutes because I didn't come here to stay down. I came here because I feel God again. I came here because I heard him whispering in my ears at night. I came here because I'm starting to feel weird things. I came here because I'm starting to see visions in the night. I came here because I'm starting to have dreams about tomorrow. I'm here, I'm here because I'm starting to see businesses that I... I see myself living in houses that I didn't build, eating from vineyards that I didn't plant. But you're going to have to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. I'm going to give you about 13 seconds to set your year in order. We're not waiting until January 1st. My good days start today. Uh, give your neighbor a high five and say, I feel God again. Watch this. Watch what he says. He says, get up and go up from here. Where is here? Egypt. Because you think Egypt going to leave you. Or maybe you don't know him as Egypt. Maybe you call him James. But you think Egypt is going to leave you. But here's the word of the Lord. He says you're going to have to get up and leave Egypt. There are some things God won't take out of your life. There's some things you're going to have to walk away from. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Ain't no sense of you praying, Lord, give me the strength to walk away. God said, I gave you the strength when I gave you legs. I gave you the strength when I gave you a prayer life. I gave you strength when I gave you a, a, a partner and a praise partner and a prayer partner. Everybody say, you're going to have to get up and leave Egypt. And where, where am I going? Where am I going? I'm going to the place that he promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, now watch this theological conundrum because Abraham is the father. Isaac is the son. Jacob is the grandson. And God told Abraham that I'm going to bless you as many as the stars are in the sky. And I'm going to bless you as many as the grains of sand on the seashore. And now, Abraham is 175 years old. And he ain't seen it yet. But it was always in the process. Because remember, according to the custom, in order to have a son, if your wife couldn't give you a child, you could take one of her handmaids. So God says, Abraham, I'm going to bless you through your seed. Abraham said, what seed? See, the problem with most of y'all is you don't think God can do it if you don't see it. He says, don't worry about it. Now, they go above God, and Sarah says, you can have a baby with Hagar. And they have a son named Ishmael. And then God says, Ricky, he says, I know y'all had a child, but this ain't the seed. Just touch your, I need all the single women say, I, I, just look at another single woman and say, I know you got a man, but that ain't the seed. I know you got a job, but that ain't the career. I know you got a house, but that ain't the home. God says, you cannot manufacture seed. You can only receive it. So now he says, you got ahead of me, but, but I love you and I got grace. Go Now watch this. He says, but you will have a son. Here is what, here's what Sarah does. Ha! How am I going to have a son 
I'm a hundred years old, and he is too. He ain't working, and I ain't ready. God says, the reason why I gave it to you when you couldn't produce is so you will know where it came from. God will never give it to you in your capabilities. They give birth to a son named what? Isaac. And then once God gives him Isaac, then he turns around and asks for it back. Here it is. The Bible says he takes him up. Mount Sinai. And he's saying, God, I don't know why in the world you would make me wait a hundred years to ask for it back. But because you said so, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will. Daddy, where are we going? Just come on, boy. Servants, y'all go back home. This is between me and the lad. And he's going up the mountain. He says, Daddy, you said we're coming up here for a sacrifice. Where, where is the sacrifice? Daddy looks at him and says, son, don't worry about it. The Lord will provide. He says, now lay down. Isaac is saying, for what? Takes a knife and is about to stab what he's been waiting on. And because he was obedient... Right in the process of losing it, God says, Abraham, stay your hand. And the promise is still not yet here. Then Isaac meets Rebekah. And through Rebekah, they have twins, Jacob and Esau. And through Jacob, comes the 12 tribes of Israel. And now the promise that God gave Abraham 170 plus years ago is now coming into fruition while Abraham is 175 years old. Can I just tell somebody who the devil thought that he was going to kill before you got it? Here is the word of the Lord. God told me to tell you, you're going to live to see it. Oh, it may not happen next week. It might not happen next month. It might take some time. But everybody who has ever thought that the devil was going to kill you, he can't because you got to live long enough to see it. That ought to send about 200 of y'all online and about 300 people in the room crazy because that means that if there's a doctor's report that says you're not going to live, the doctor must be lying because you're going to live to see it. <laughs> Give somebody a high five and say, I'm going to live to see it. God promised me I was going to be a millionaire and I'm going to live to see it. He promised me that my children were going to be saved and I'm going to live to see it. He promised me that somebody in my friend, my, my friend circle was going to get off of drugs and I'm going to live to see it. Somebody shout, I'm going to live to see it. I'm going to live to see that business open. I'm going to live to see this body healed. I'm going to live to see this ministry to the end. Somebody shout, I'm going to live. God says, I'm about to change the direction of your life and I'm going to make sure that you live long enough to see it. He says, now I want you to get out of here. Don't go by yourself, you and the people whom you bought from the land of Egypt. Watch this. He says, because when I bless you this time, I'm not blessing you individually. I'm blessing you generationally. Every parent tell another parent, don't worry about your children. God's going to bless your generation. Oh, I don't know who that's for. This blessing is too big for you. This is big enough for you, your children, and your children's children. What am I saying to you? God is about to change the direction of everything connected to you.
Matter of fact, hold your neighbor's hand and say, God just changed your direction. He just changed your direction. I'm so anointed that you can't sit next to me and stay stuck on stupid. By the time this anointing gets fallen off of me, I'm about to bless your mama and I ain't never even met her. Do I have somebody in the room that understands that the anointing on your life is so thick that you're about to bless cousins that you have never met? Shout somebody and say, you're blessed because you're next to me. Matter of fact, tell your neighbor, I'm coming out of this, and you are too. And if they ain't moving yet, grab them, rock them, and reel them, and reel them, and rock them. Tell them, you better get that sad feeling, that disgusting feeling off of your heart and mind. Get rid of that insecurity. Stop telling yourself you ain't more than enough. Get your butt out of that seat and get ready to go to the next level. Grab, I don't care if they haven't bought the product yet. I don't care if they are not shopping at the store yet. I don't care if you don't have any customers yet. I don't care if you're still single. Somebody shout, it's my season. Now grab your neighbor and say, when I move, you move just like that. If I jump, you jump just like that. If I run, you run just like that. This ain't about me. This is about us. I want one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Then I need everything that has breath to praise. Watch this. Watch this. How many of you know that sometimes you don't know it's yours because you think it's somebody else's? No, because the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Canaanites already live in the land. And God says, don't worry about who's there. They are just keeping it warm and tilling the ground and building the house. You don't understand that God will employ your enemies to do the work. God. And here you are trying to get rid of your enemies you need to be giving out applications for enemies because they are building houses while you build lives. Says, I know what you see, but it's still yours. Did you hear what I just said? I know you can't tell because your name isn't on it, but it's still yours. I know you look at the bank account and be like, he can't be prophesying to me. But it's still yours. Somebody shout, it's still mine. I know whose name is on it, but my name is in it. And he says, I'm going to drive out everything that currently occupies the space. Now, this is where some of y'all going to have to be patient with God because you think you're losing friends and it's God driving them out. This is why you're going to have to be patient because you're around here talking about what's wrong with me and what am I doing wrong and, and I'm treating everybody nice and, and I'm, 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 I'm a nice person. Why are they leaving me? God says because I'm driving them out. I'm driving them out. They don't share your morals. They don't share your value system. And they were actually setting you up to kill you once you got in. So I got to separate you from what you won't separate yourself from because where I am taking you, you don't have time for people to compete with you. And you're going to have to survive this season as God drives it out. Who am I talking to? How many of you feel lonely? Like, oh my God, my relationship with them ain't like it used to be. God says, I'm driving it out. And why in the world do you keep giving CPR to things that I'm killing? Somebody shall let God be God. God says, if you have the courage to come out, I got the power to drive it out. He said, Bobby, he said, come up. And when you come up, I'll drive them out. Here it is. Write this down. It's not deep, but it's true. You are one decision away from God changing the direction of your life. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You didn't hear me. 
you couldn't have heard me. You are one decision away from God changing everything about your life. Not 12, not a year, one decision. Now, it can be 40 years if it takes you 40 years to make that decision. Or it can be 13 days if you make that decision. This ain't about if God can. It's about whether you will. And everybody in this room has a hint and an inkling about what that one decision is. And it will be the hardest decision you have ever made in your life. Because right now you don't know how to live without that decision. Right now you don't know what life would be like if everything ain't the way it is. And sometimes we settle for comfort over destiny. At least it's the devil I know. No, show me a new devil. Because guess what? The devil I know also knows me. Are you listening to me? God says you are one decision away. If I were Moses, I would have been asking God a lot of questions. God says, listen, God says, uh, y'all get out of here. And he says, I ain't going with you because you're stiff-necked. Any, any hard-haired people in the house? Come on, like, come on now. How at your boy. Like, God tell you to do something. You'd be like, but God, do I really got to all the way do it? Like, God, what if I halfway do it? And, and, and here's how you know you're halfway doing everything. He know my heart. See that right there. When you start talking about he know my heart, and he does, God says, I'm going to send y'all out of here, but I'm not going with you. Because if I go with you, I'm going to kill you. No, he said, I'm going to consume you. He says, you done made me mad. I done gave you manna and water out of dry places, and you around here complaining, so you're going to get out. Because I've been good to you. You ain't been good to me. You've been switching gods on me. I've been blessing you. You ain't been praising me. But I'm still about to bless you. Why? Because I told Abraham I would. Some of you in here don't understand that you're going to be blessed not because you're good, but because he promised your mama. Anybody ever had a praying grandmother? You didn't die in that car accident because you're a good driver. You didn't die because your grandmama put oil on your head when you were born. Nobody didn't break into your house because you got strong locks. It's because when your mama went to sleep at night, she said, Lord, touch my children. Anybody want to praise God that you got somebody that's praying for you? Tell somebody, I got somebody praying for me. He says, he says, I'm going to bless you because I told your grandfather that I would. And 2 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, for no matter how many promises God has made, his promises are yes and amen. And I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but nothing you can do can separate you from the love of God. Neither heights, nor depths, nor things present, nor things to come. And I know that there is a narrative in the world that says that we are saved by work. Yes, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We are saved by grace. He said, so I, I remember when I was 22 years old, I, I got my first townhouse. I bought it. It was $86,000. And my mortgage was five hundred and ninety. dollars And I went to Rooms Ago and I stacked it out. But rooms Ago was the truth. Still is sometime. I went to rooms ago, and then I went over to um, uh, it was a, it's a place called H H Greg in Fort Wayne, and I, I bought my first refrigerator. Now this is this is when refrigerators start getting ice makers on them. Y'all know what I'm talking about, and you can get water, and and so I bought me one with an ice maker, and man, you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> and man, listen, 
I had me, I had me a refrigerator. Uh, Cause see, I came. We grew up in the house with the, with the white refrigerator, where the, where the hole was bigger than the refrigerator. You know what I'm talking about? Because it was, you know, refrigerators back then used to also be cabinets. You put your bread up there, and you put your Tupperware up there, you know, your cake pans. How many of y'all up? And it's dusty and greasy up there right now, I guarantee it. I got my refrigerator, and, and uh, when, when I bought it, I, I think the refrigerator back then, y'all think about this, the refrigerator back then was like 1600. Now, now refrigerators got TVs on them, which I understand why you would buy a refrigerator with a TV. I, wouldn't, I refuse to stare at the refrigerator. <laughs> got, the, got the refrigerator, and let me tell you, I didn't have the money to do it. I had to go preach a revival at a church called Mount Moriah Church in Detroit, Michigan. And, and Pastor Flowers, Kenneth Flowers, who's the pastor of the church, he knew I was getting my own place. I went up there and preached. This was back in the day, a five-day revival. Hearns was playing the bass back then. I, I remember Derek was playing the bass back in Gary, Indiana at those times. And I would go up there. I got my refrigerator, and I was preaching, got my little check, went and bought my refrigerator. And then they said, uh, you can get a warranty. Now, see, now you got to make a decision. Because that extra two, three hundred dollars. Plus, when you do go and try to get it turned in, they're going to give you problems anyway. So I'm sitting up here, you know what? Mama said, get the warranty. I'm going to get the warranty. I paid my three hundred dollars, got my warranty on my new refrigerator. And eight months in, my ice maker stopped working. Now, what I didn't know is that it had a filter. Y'all, Some of y'all go home right now. And change your filter. Your water tastes like metal. You just need to go home, change your filter. So, so the filter had bagged up and caused the engine to burn out. And the refrigerator broke. I was panicking, thinking, oh, my God, I got to buy a new refrigerator. Couldn't afford the one that I got. Ah, then it dawns on me, I got a warranty. And now I get to get my refrigerator fixed. Not because I did right by the refrigerator, but because I bought a promise. And the promise says, even if you don't do right in this span of time. So the reason why God blessed Israel is not because Israel was perfect, but he promised Abraham. And now because he promised Abraham, he is now blessing Israel because of the promise. Now, that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is when I finally sold the townhouse and moved here uh, to Fort Wayne at the time, when I finally sold it and moved from Fort Wayne to move to Houston, the realtor asked me this simple question. He said, where is the warranty on the appliances? So I had to find them, and, and, and I grew up in the hood, so they were in a Ziploc bag. I, come on now, yeah. No, we were so hood, we used to wash Ziploc bags. Oh, no, no, no. No, I, I, don't, I don't, don't frown up at me. You, you, you little rich, get on my nerve, you little Thundercats. But we, I don't care if it was spaghetti in it, you had to wash it until the grease came out. And mama made us hang it upside down on the dish rack. Y'all ain't got dish racks. It used to, it, the dish rack, we ain't had no dishwasher, it was a dish rack. That, that had to sit on the side of the sink and the water would run in, water spots on it for days. Ziploc bag, which was a file cabinet. <laughs> he says, put them in the drawer. Because when you have warranties on a product, it helps to sell the house. Because the people who buy the house understand that they don't also have to buy appliances. And it is then when I found out that warranties are transferable. Oh, I need somebody in here to hear what I just said. Baby, you've been covered by your mama's warranty. You've been covered by your father's warranty. You being covered by the Sunday school teacher's warranty. I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but anybody want to shout, I'm covered. I'm covered. I'm not perfect, but I'm covered. I'm not flawless, but I'm covered. I don't always get it right, but I'm covered. I don't always say the right things, but I'm covered. Somebody shout, I'm covered. 
Watch this. So now they are going into the promised land because they're covered by the promise that God made to Abraham. And here it is. I'm almost done. God says, all right, now y'all go ahead. I'm not going with you. I can't go with you because I, I, I can't stand sin. I will consume you. Moses builds a tent outside of the temple. He builds a tent outside of the tabernacle. Why? Because he's, God says, I can't be with you. Well, what happens in the holies of holies? The presence of God. Are you with me? There was something called the Ark of the Covenant. But God says, I can't be with you. I can't, I can't be with you. M my presence isn't with you. So what Moses does is he builds, watch this, a tent outside of the tabernacle and says, if I can't worship you inside, I'll worship you outside. I wish I had somebody in here today. The tabernacle is the best translation of the tent. It's the place where the worship was held. Moses literally moved the church from where it was to it, from a normal place to where it was, and then he begins to worship God. See, here is a deal that most people cannot feel God because they can only worship him in normal spaces. You can only praise him if everybody on your row is praising him. You can only praise him if it's your favorite song. You can only praise him if, if, if it's your favorite soloist. But I need somebody over the next 30 seconds to step outside of the temple and say, I don't care if you don't praise him, I'm covered. I don't care if you bless him. He's been blessing me. I need 300 people in this place to think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you and begin to open up your mouth and give God the glory. Nope, nope. See, see that's, that's that temple praise. That's that temple praise. You need instruments and you need somebody on your road to do it. God didn't save your row. He saved you. He didn't bless your neighbor. He blessed you. He didn't touch their mama only. He touched yours. If I can get somebody in here to think about God and his goodness and open up your mouth and give God. Slap three people and say, he's been good to me. He's been good to me. I don't have to worship him in the camp. I can worship him out of the camp. Matter of fact, some of y'all need to step out of your row because your neighbor ain't going to do nothing. They've already proven that. I need you to step in the aisle and say, when I, when I think about what he's done for me, I'll do it by myself. He blessed me once. He blessed me twice. He blessed me in the name of Jesus Christ. He took that spot, took it away. He took that aneurysm, took it away. Took those fibroids, took them away. Took that tumor and took it away. And so when I think about what he's done for me, I'm not waiting on you. I'm going to do it by myself. Now I'm going to give you 30 seconds to open Open up your mouth and give him glory. I said, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to open up your mouth and give him the glory. Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, I feel God again. Come on, turn around and look at somebody who really got the glory on them. I, you're going to have to search for it because everybody in here, tell them, neighbor, when I think about what God has done for me, it makes me want to say yes. I'm trying not to do this, y'all. Matter of fact, let's go ahead on and preach. Do you remember the Bible says that David was dancing so much so that he danced out of his clothes? And the Bible says his wife, Michael, was looking out of the window and she saw him losing his mind. And she said, oh, you showing out for them young girls in the temple. Watch this. David said, oh, you don't know. This ain't got nothing to do with nobody up in here. Great is he. That is it. He said, this ain't got nothing to do with my neighbor. You don't know that I got attacked by a bear and he brought me out. I got attacked by a lion and he brought me out. I got attacked by a giant and he brought me out. I, I got Uriah killed and he saved me still. And then me and Bathsheba had a baby and he still kept me in my right mind. I'm not praising God for no spectators. I'm praising God because of what he's done for me. Watch this. And the Bible says that after judging David's worship, she died without having children. Because when you question my worship, you dry up your destiny. I dare you look at your neighbor and say, don't, mind, don't worry about my business, baby. I'm about to worship God over the next 30 seconds because of what he's done for me.
Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, you don't know how good he's been to me. Can I get about 500 people to turn around in a circle? Did you hear what I said? Turn around in a circle and look your neighbor in the eye and shout, neighbor, every time I, I turn around, uh, he keeps on blessing me. Did you hear what I said? Give your neighbor a high five and shout, neighbor, I feel God again. I almost gave up. I almost threw in the towel. But that God of mine gave me another chance. Can I get 500 people to step out in the aisles? I feel glory in the room. Step out of your seat. Come out of your tabernacle. Get in your tent and shout. This one is for your daughter. This one is for your son. This one is for your mind. Open up your mouth. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. I ain't gonna worship him for you. You're gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to do this on your own. I'm on my way. I'm coming. But you're gonna have to do this one for yourself. Can I get somebody to just spend the next 30 seconds giving God the praise for what he's done for you? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Shout it, yeah! Shout yeah! Watch what the Bible says. The Lord said, Moses, my presence shall go with you. Ah, I'm about to lose my mind in here. I'm trying to hold it back. He says, my presence shall go with you. Not them. You. Not y'all. Tell your neighbor, let me tell you how you know that God loves you because he set you next to me. They didn't get it. They, they don't even know, they don't know favor when they see it. Let me prove to you that you're going to survive because I know I'm going to make it. He told me to tell you the reason why you should know you're going to survive is because he set you next to Lay your hand on somebody. Shout neighbor. You're sitting next to somebody who's a survivor. Do I have any survivors in the room? If you're happy and you know it, say yeah. Can I tell you one more thing? And I'm gonna let you go home. When my wife and I moved in together, I called the cable company to get us cable. They said, what's your social security number? I gave them my social security number. They said, how you doing, Mr. Henderson? I said, how y'all know my name? They said, because you're already in the database. And they said, because you're in the database, your name is always written. Here's what he told Moses. I know you by name. And here's what they said. Do you want the package you had last time? I said, nope. Upgrade me. Can I get somebody? Tell a neighbor, I'm not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. Tell them I'm not the same. I'm not taking what I used to take. I'm not accepting what I used to accept. Because one thing I know, God is on my side. If you know he's on your side, shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. I feel God again. I feel God again. 
He said, show me your glory over the next 40 seconds. I need somebody to give God the glory. Over the next 40 seconds, good God Almighty, I need somebody to give God the glory. Oh, that's cute. I didn't say give him a hand clap. I didn't even say give him praise. I said give him the glory. I said give him the glory. I said give him the glory. Come on, you still got 30 seconds. You got 20 more seconds to think about when you should have died. To think about when you shouldn't have made it. You got 10 more seconds. And when these 10 seconds are up, I need you to lose your mind up in here. Three, two, give God the glory. Give God the glory. God again. I feel God again. I know I'm getting in. I feel God again. Should have been over, but I feel God again. There's a new chapter coming. You're going to need him in this one. You can't walk this part of the journey by yourself. You can't do it on reputation. You can't do it on confidence only. You're going to need God on this one. And God said, Moses, I'm going with you. And they're going to get blessed because they're with you. See, here's the thing. If you get back in God like you should, it'll bless your whole family. Some of y'all been praying for your nephew. God says, I'm going to bless him, but I'm going to do it through you. You've been praying for your uncle. God says, I got him, but I'm going to do it. I'm with you. I'm with you. And everywhere your foot shall tread. I'm going to give it to you. And the only thing that can mess up what God gave you is a complaining spirit. Moses, Moses let them get on him. And when you let them get on you, then you get what's theirs. Stay in your lane. Don't let anybody take away your optimism. Stay full of joy. Stay peaceful in discontented circumstances. Keep the smile on your face even if it's a frown in your heart. Because he told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Somebody say, he's with me. Then don't, don't let anybody tell you he's not. They were not perfect and he was still with them. They were complaining the whole way and he was with them. Deliver me from this God that thinks like people. You no, know, some people can't understand God because they think God should rationalize things the way they do. And so when they see God through their lens, 
They have this warped, demented perspective of a righteous yet gracious God who says, I got to keep my word even if you don't keep your promise. I got to bless you because I told Abraham I would, so I'm not going with you, but take the blessing. I will consume you. Now, how does that work for you and I? If you come out of the Old Testament, remember the Old Testament is God concealed, the New Testament is God revealed. How does it happen? You see, Moses is a type of Christ. God reinstitutes the same thing by emancipating us, the Gentiles, through Jesus Christ. And what Moses did for the children of Israel, Jesus did for you and I. And now Jesus Christ is the one that he's with. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And because his son became flesh, we are now joined the heirs of Jesus Christ. And everything that God promised Jesus is now ours. Because we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And we believe in our heart that God has raised his son from the dead. And now we are not righteous. We are made righteous. Created in the image of God. The best thing the devil has ever done. Is to make you not feel like you're his. You can't stop somebody who can feel God. When I feel God, I don't care what the bills say. When I feel God, I don't care what the doctor says. When I feel God. Somebody shout, I feel God again. You're going to make it. In spite of the difficulty of this season, you are going to make it. Encourage your neighbor and tell him, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. You can make it. I'm convinced that this is an irregular season. You're going to be shocked at the blessings that start to pop up in your life. Ask your neighbor, you going with me? You going with me? Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to live the best, the blessed life. Are you going with me? You going with me? I'm going to live and not die. Are you going with me? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get what I've been praying for. Are you going with me? I'm going to see what I've been waiting for. Are you going with me? telling you what the Lord showed me. It's about to go down. <laughs> it's about to be crazy. Head spinning blessings that are going to make you scared. It's going to be so good you're going to feel like you're stealing. You're going to look at your bank account and be like, that, that, that all can't be mine. But remember, favor is when God breaks the rules. To bless you. You think they know you now? Wait till this time next year. You think you have envisions now? Get your pen ready because you're about to be a ready writer. You think... You think you've seen Revelation before? The Revelation that's coming in this next season? It's going to shock you. You're going to be studying your sermons and you're going to shout sitting at your desk. It's going to be so good. He's been speaking to me. I was, I was looking at Pastor Torrance and, and Lady Kim's son sitting there at, on, the, on the road. The Lord just told me, he said, go grab him because I'm, I'm about to use him to preach the gospel. I asked him, I said, how you been thinking about it? He said, nope. So you better start thinking then. 
Because what God has for you right now ain't even on your radar. You ain't ready for this. But he's got it ready for you. Stand on your feet. If your children are in this building or anywhere near you, if they're in children's church or next to you, if they're at home, if they're at their grandparents' house, I need you to have them on your mind right now. This is a generational blessing. Lift your hands in this place. And he always, always holds me close. So hallelujah. hallelujah. I am not alone. I am not alone. Oh, oh. He's my comfort. He's my comfort. And he Say it one more time. Say hallelujah. 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 I am not, I'm not, not alone. Hold yourself. He's my comfort. And he always. You'd be surprised how many people next to you feel all by themselves. But everybody say, I feel God again. He will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. Pastor, you don't know what I did. He does. I don't need to know. God is not shocked by who you turned out to be. <laughs> he knows the end from the beginning. You got to survive the wilderness. You got to survive Egypt. You're going in. You're going in. Hallelujah. Come on, Kafir, sing it one time. Hallelujah. Sing it for me. Guys, me. Come on, let's worship him for a few moments. Through mountains and valleys. Yeah. Mountains and valleys. Yeah. So refreshing. Face to face, face to face.
hands together and bless the Lord in this place. You are not alone. They can call you as weird as they want, but God likes weird. <laughs> We're peculiar people. Sometimes weird just means you have the courage to be different than everybody else. Nobody pays for similarities. They only pay for difference. As you give today, I want you to understand this. Every gift you give has the chance to break a chain. Every time. Raise your hand if you got some chain holding you back today. Let me see your hands. Some chain. Psychological, institutional. We're given today asking God that this is the year of manifested promises. Remember, we don't start our year here in January. We're not, we start in October. We start in the last quarter of the previous year and we still claim all the next year. Somebody shout, I'm claiming the whole year. I mean, you really believe you can walk into a season where you don't have some good days, some bad days. Like you can claim seasons. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm prosperous throughout this whole season. Somebody say, I'm prosperous through this whole season. Everything I think about is going to work. Every dream I have is coming true. Did you hear what I said? How many of y'all speak like that to yourself? I'm not waiting on anything to happen. I'm going to make it happen. Not with arrogance, but with faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You gotta have faith. It doesn't take a lot. Doesn't take a lot. But you gotta have some. Remember, we're giving our tithes and offering, and we're also giving the gifts uh, to Lady Shawnee, and we're gonna bless God and we're gonna bless her, and you're gonna be blessed as a result of it. I need all the blessed people to just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I was blessed when I ain't had nothing. Amen, somebody. You better not wait on the stuff to say it. You better say it in advance. Somebody say, I'm blessed. My children are blessed. Their children are blessed. Their children are blessed. And a thousand generations. Yes, indeed. Till the Lord come back, they're going to be blessed. Huh? Henry Ford been dead a long time. His kids still rich. Mr. Kathy, the owner of Chick-fil-A, he passed away to be with the Lord. He was a Sunday school teacher for 50 years, but his grandchildren ain't got to worry about nothing. If you just so happen to be a Walton, you listening to me? 
If you just so happen to be a Walton, you blessed because of what Sam Walton did many years ago. And you can do the same thing for your family. Our children don't have to have, to have debt when they come out of college. Y'all don't believe that kind of stuff. I want you to have a kind of faith where you say, I'm just not going to put money in the bank. You need to start thinking about starting a bank. Once you get your gift, I want you to rise with me because we're getting ready to give it. If you're watching online right now, the same promise that's in this building is on your life. I don't care if you're in the United States of America, if you're on one of the continents that are not so close. I don't care if you're watching us in the middle of the morning or late at night. God never sleeps, nor does he ever slumber. And if you're with us today, you're part of the Lighthouse Nation, and the same anointing that rests on this house is going to rest on your house. Let me tell you what we're doing right now. We're building a park over in Anguilla for the, for the impoverished kids in that area. And guess what? We're going to put a lighthouse on that property so they'll know we're there. Amen. I don't know if y'all heard about this young lady uh, uh, that just um, went home to be with the Lord. They had a funeral yesterday, Ra Singleton. I know you, you all saw it online, but this church, and we don't talk about it because God blesses us to do it, but we made a $20,000 donation to those services. See, we, we're doing the work. Somebody shout, we're doing the work. We're doing the work. And we don't have to put everything on Instagram. We don't got to do everything for the gram. You can do some stuff for the gram, but you ain't got to do it all for the gram. Now, we bless people every day. Y'all don't even know it. And every time you're faithful with this, we can be faithful with this. We bless people every day, all day. We just recently furnished the lady's entire house not too long ago. We went over there to see her. She had nothing in the home. Her and the children were sleeping on the floor. The church furnished the whole house. Come on, y'all. In this time with people dogging the church out, talking about we ain't doing nothing, you ought to be praising God better than that. Next time somebody tell you the church ain't doing nothing, you tell them, I don't know what your church doing, but mine is. We about that life. For real. Y'all ready? All right, bring my affirmation up, please. Repeat after me as I move towards greater. I will accept all divine ideas, thoughts, or concepts that will connect me to my destiny. Say, I believe that what Jesus Christ has done for me is bigger than what anyone has, can, and will do to me. And because of his full gift, I will lend to many nations and borrow from none. If you believe that, put a praise on it. Pastor gives to my right, your left. I got a minute and 55 seconds before I let you go. I want to know if there's anybody in this place today that doesn't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of your sin. Don't sit down. We're going home. If you don't know Jesus Christ, That's one of the reasons why we came. Now, we got two things here. We got the committed, which we call the community, and we've got the core. If you are in the community, that simply means you're watching us online right now, perhaps in this building, and you're saying to yourself, you know what? I love watching church online. I love giving periodically to different causes, and I support the local church, and I call the Lighthouse Nation my family. You are a part of our community, and we welcome you. If you want to be a part of that core that simply says, oh, I want to go to this church specifically. I want to volunteer one time a month. I want to attend at least one live service a month, and I'm going to tithe and offer every single week at one of the campuses. That's what the community and the core is. That's as simple as it is to be a part of this family. So if you're online, they're getting ready to start talking to you now how, about how you can be a part of the Lighthouse Nation. If you're in this building today, and this is the place where you want to grow and learn and matriculate into different levels and deeper levels of faith. I want you to come from wherever you are. We've got people who are welcoming and waiting on you and I'd love to speak to you and shake your hand uh, in the back afterwards and let you know how glad we are that you came. God bless you. Is there somebody else? Lighthouse, make it a big deal as they come. God bless you, my sister. There's a whole family coming to my right. Come on and praise God for them. Come on and praise God. You can do better than that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. Praise you. Praise God. God bless you, my sister.
Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. They're still coming. God bless you, young lady. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else? They're coming out of the balcony. Come on and praise God for them. God bless you. Your spirit lives within me. So God bless you. Spirit, yeah. God bless you. They're still coming. They're still coming. My victory. My victory. My victory. There's another one coming. They're still coming. Lord God, we thank you today for this day. Thank you for the spirit of God. And thank you that even when life told us you were absent, you let us live long enough to feel you again. Dismiss us from this place. Give new G traveling graces and mercies back to their different cities. Thank you for the gift of Ricky Dillard. Thank you for the lives of my wife and my mother whom we celebrate today. Thank you for the lives of every person watching online and wherever they are that this prayer would meet them right in their automobile, their living room, their office cubicle, wherever they are watching this, in the kitchen, somewhere locked up in the closet just trying to make it through the day. I want you to know that you can feel God again. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Tell somebody on your way out, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Johnny.